And tonight, the vetting of the president continues as we bring you another edition of The Real Obama. Now, in this installment, we shine the spotlight on an executive order that the White House was hoping that you would never learn about. Now, the president signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order late Friday afternoon. And since that time, now the measure has been virtually ignored by the mainstream media. Now, the order essentially gives the president of the United States absolute power over any and all American resources during both times of peace and national crisis. Now, this includes, but is not limited to, food and livestock, water, plants, energy, health resources, transportation, and construction materials, and gives the government the ability to, quote, control the general distribution of any material, including applicable services, in the civilian market. Now, White House Press Secretary Jay Carney laughed off a question about the document at today's briefing. Let's take a look. There's been some online commentary suggesting this gives the executive branch power to allocate energy, food, water in either peacetime or wartime. And there are some conservative blogs that are pushing the notion that this suggests the White House is preparing for a war with Iran. Can you explain what this executive order was? <laughs> well, I cannot explain that reaction to it. I think it was a fairly uh, standard and routine uh, piece of business. Now, not everybody's laughing about this executive order. In fact, some have suggested this would give the president of the United States the authority to declare basically martial law during times of peace. And to be sure, this is simply the latest string of actions taken by the administration that ignore the basic principles of our Constitution. Joining me now in tonight's edition of The Real Obama, Jay Sekulow from the American Center for Law and Justice and Fox News contributor Lanny Davis. Guys, welcome back. I'm Hi, laughing about it, Sean. How are you? All right. Good to see. Well, let's give a little history here. Jay, we'll start with you because um, this was actually signed a similar National Defense Resources Preparedness by Bill Clinton. You have similar executive orders signed by sure. Dwight Eisenhower, George W. Bush. But there's a difference. There are some things that changed in this that I think has brought, I think, legitimate criticism and concern. Can you go through that? No, I think you're absolutely right. The, the, the idea of this act is nothing new. It's, presidents have had this since the 1950s. Uh, but what is different about this one, different than any of the other one, is the definition of national defense. Uh, it's incorporated what's called the Stafford Act. I don't want to get overly technical. But this gives the president much broader authority than any of the previous acts. In fact, and Lanny, Lanny may remember this, the previous acts didn't give incorporation of the Stafford Act, which is a civilian uh, civil situation uh, where you, the president president would have unlimited authority, subject, of course, to checks and balances. And we, we can't ignore checks and balances here. But the definition of national defense is broader than it has ever been under any of these previous executive orders. And I think that's the most significant aspect of this. And by the way, the president's getting flack from the left and the right. The left said this is preparation for the war in Iran. That's why the president's doing this, a potential war with Iran and the concern about uh, the energy resources of our country. And of course, conservatives are saying this is unchecked power. Yeah. There's a balance here. But the the one thing that's very different, Sean, is the fact that the national defense definition is different than it has ever been and much broader than it's All ever right, been. Lenny, with this very specific section, and Jay, correct me if I'm wrong, is 801J, if I recall. J, and, right. That's and correct. Why would the president change that definition? And, Lanny, you're an expert in media. Nobody is as good as you. Uh, if you want to release <laughs> something that you don't want people to find and you're in the White House, when do you release it? Late on a Friday uh, afternoon, hoping nobody pays attention to it. Why would Actually, they I used to release. I used to release things at 10 o'clock on July 3rd. That was a really good. Yeah, that's uh, a good time. time. I got it. Uh, nice to hear you, Jay, being your scholarly you self. And I want to compliment Sean Hannity for the first time in a long time. Oh boy. Of not being uh, slanted and describing this as a bipartisan act that actually goes back to Franklin Roosevelt, Jay, and through Harry right. Truman, not just the 1950s. But he changed it. But, but Lanny, we well, got to that part. You, you, you know, right. you're wasting so some valuable so, airtime. We, we got you that You don't like me complimenting He's you, Sean. He's being nice. Uh, I the second point I want to make... The uh, the second point I want to make, aside from Sean Hannity being a good guy, is that this is really not a significant risk to America. I don't know why he made those changes, to answer your question, but there's no risk here because every president needs authority in times of emergency, such as a nuclear attack or something that is another 9-11, and this authority has been on the books, and President Obama won't misuse it. The real question is, why are the extremes on the left and the right so quick to jump beyond the facts and look at 
the worst possible interpretation, and it's almost I, I can lunacy give you the if you look at some of these. Tell me. Uh, and, and yeah. because, the, because of the way the president's acted, for example, we have a very specific yeah. process for recess appointments. And with the National Labor Board appointments of the president, remember, he didn't go through that process. That's right. The, the conservatives like myself, Jay, I think would argue um, yeah. that the health care mandate is not constitutional. Uh, the Cato Institute actually has the top 10 instances where the president has pretty much thumbed his no nose at the Constitution. Uh, and so there is this suspicion, Jay. I'll go to you. Yeah. Yeah, there's the, I think the, the biggest problem here is context. It is a uh, document dump in the sense that it comes in late on a Friday evening. That's an interesting situation. It's second is the context of the other situations. You talk about the Attorney General and the Fast and Furious situation. Then the Attorney General said he was concerned about what the NYPD was doing, which was clearly within the law, and I think the, the uh, Department of Justice has now backed off on that wisely. Uh, but you look at the context, and then the definitional aspect, and, and I think the definition is the problem. I don't believe, and I, I agree, that the president could get away with this because, number one, you've got a Congress, you've got an active media, that's why we're here tonight. But you've got to ask yourself why this overly broad definition of national defense, why incorporate the Stafford Act, which is, talks about foreign and national interests and, and tsunamis and, and situations which the president would have control over under normal source, but why do you have to expand it in the form of this executive order? That's the concern. Of course, executive orders have been challenged yeah. before in court. Let me throw this so to that's the, the thing here. I don't understand the national defense issue. That's the biggest thing. You know, and, and I think what this is, you know, uh, Woodrow Wilson progressives like yourself, Lanny, w w one of the things we conservatives have a problem is, is you guys believe in this concept that the Constitution is a li living, breathing document, and so you can ignore issues like checks and balances and separation of powers, like in the case of recess appointments. So I think we're looking at this differently, and that is that in, in this particular case, does it give a president pretty much Im impunity to do whatever they want? And why that, change a... the definition, considering the president has thumbed his nose at the Constitution in the past? Uh, first, first of all, my point of view is he hasn't thumbed his nose, and if the Affordable Care Act is unconstitutional, let the Supreme Court decide that, not Jay and uh, J Mr. Justice Hannity. But most importantly, this is more reflective <laughs> of the paranoia on the left and the right that's going on in America and polarizing this country so badly. Jay and I, as Jay is a conservative and myself as a liberal, are able to exchange views in a civil way with Sean Hannity as a civil moderator. What's going on on the Twitter and the internet is lunacy. If you read yeah. some of these comments, it's yeah. not Jay analyzing this calmly. It's complete well, why are we lunacy. Attacking people that have and a nobody is view. mentioning Ronald Reagan. And nobody is. I'm only saying that it's the extreme interpretation that causes the polarization in this yeah, country. I know. Sean. And, and the president and has never contributed to this by saying Republicans want but, dirty air and water and want kids with autism, Down syndrome, fending for themselves. That, He's never contributed to this. At all. Yeah. I don't like rhetoric. I don't like the extreme rhetoric. Sometimes yeah. I think the president has gone too far, and so has the right. Republican Congress. And when there was a Republican no. president, there were recess appointments, guys. So let's be even. Problem. No, not recess appointments while they were in session. That right. never there, happened this, until Obama. This session was one until senator Obama. holding the floor. This, right, senator was, this session was one senator holding the floor. Excuse and that me. was an abuse it's of the Constitution. The Constitution says they are recess session. appointments only when they're in recess, That's though, right. and they're not in recess. With one senator coming up, is it possible that the president...